we can first start by adding some code to our app.jsx. So let's open it up and let's see what we can add there first. We're first going to import some things from Material UI. Specifically, we're going to say import CSS baseline from MUI material. If you're not sure what a specific component does, simply hover over it and then you should be able to read it right here. The CSS baseline allows us to kickstart an elegant, consistent, and simple baseline to build upon. Basically, it's going to change some styles for us automatically. And from now on, whenever we are working with some Material UI components, I'll always try to go to their website and explain everything from start to finish. Why are we using this component? How can we use it? And how can we modify it for further use? With that said, we're going to also need a few things from React Router DOM. Those things are going to be route and also a switch. That's coming from react-router-dom. If I'm not mistaken, I forgot to install React Router DOM before, and that's completely fine. So what you can do is simply open up the terminal and run npm install react-router-dom. For people that copy the install script, it should already be installed there. So let's wait just a moment and React Router DOM will be installed in our project. And there we go. React Router DOM library has been installed. We're going to use React Router DOM to create different pages. For example, forward slash is going to be our root domain where we're going to see all movies. But then if we want to see a specific movie, that's going to be forward slash and then a specific movie ID as ASD123. That's going to be our movie information page, which is going to show more info about a specific movie. So we're going to use React Router DOM to do exactly this, to create a specific routing. I'm going to explain it in much more detail once we start using it in just a second. For now, we can delete this comment and start creating our React Router structure. Right inside of our app, we're going to have one div. Inside of that div, we're immediately going to place a CSS baseline component which is a self-closing tag. Now let's save it and let's immediately see if our app changed. As a matter of fact, let's make that an H1 so we can see it a bit better. And let's do hello dash world. And then instead of app, we're going to say filmpire. Let's go ahead and save it, open up our terminal and run npm start to start up the application on localhost 3000. And as soon as we fire up our application, we're going to get a failed to compile error. And this is the one that they left here intentionally. It says module not found can't resolve at emotion react. What is that? We're not sure at the moment, right? In C users, and then you can see it says node modules MUI. Now let's read this error together and let's try to figure out what's happening here. Well, what I would do first is I would simply copy this entire line and try Googling it. Okay, let's go ahead and click the first result. And if we scroll down, the first answer says I had a similar issue and simply install Emotion React. But he's not really mentioning why should we install it. So let's go one page back and let's try to give it some more info. You can see that this is related to Material UI somehow more specifically to the styled engine. So I'm simply going to say module not found can't resolve emotion in React. And then we're going to say material UI. Now the same issue still shows up as first, but let's try to open a few other issues by holding control and then simply clicking them. This is really useful because you can immediately open a few pages and see if you find something useful. So let's scroll down and see if we have something useful here. Again, another person keeps mentioning to simply install Emotion Style and Emotion React, but that doesn't really explain why. So let's keep it going. Same thing here, people are mentioning to install it, but finally, there is one person. As per the docs, you need to install these dependencies. It's even listed in the package.json as Peter Depp. It even says when you run Yarn or NPM that your peer dependency is missing. 
And then he goes on to say that this issue has been searched multiple times. But I think that he basically explained it. These are the peer dependencies to Material UI. And the reason why I left these errors is to show you that if someone on YouTube or on other courses simply tells you to install something, you can still have different errors. That's why you need to be able to find out yourself what the problem is. And in this case, you can keep searching through hundreds of different pages and you're simply going to waste your time. The actual solution was to go to the Material UI website. You can go to the Material UI by simply going to MUI.com. Once you're here, let's just click get started. Now this is the usage part, but we want to go to the installation page on the left side. And straight away, just zoom it in and take a look. To install and save your package JSON dependencies, run npm install MUI material, emotion react, and emotion style. So if we just followed the documentation of the software we're using, in this case being Material UI, we wouldn't have any errors. So simply go ahead and copy these two, and we're going to install them straight away. These are peer dependencies to Material UI. My whole point of this lecture was simply read the documentation of the software you're using, at least go through it briefly. And that way you're going to experience less errors. So let's go ahead and copy this, go back to our code and simply stop it from running and run npm install and then simply add emotion react and emotion style. I'm going to leave these out intentionally from the original npm install script because I wanted you guys to see that you can research things on your own and you should. I'm going to show you how to do things, how to read documentations, how to use specific components, but you need to be able to replicate everything on your own. The packages have been installed and we're simply going to run npm start right away. And before we go ahead and check this out in the browser, we're simply going to comment out this line. You can do that by pressing control and then forward slash or by simply manually adding two forward slashes at the start of this specific line. Let's go ahead and save it and check it out in the browser. There we go. Hello world, Filmpire. If we zoom it out, you're gonna notice that this looks just a bit different from the classic H1. We don't have the paddings on the left side, we just have the margin at the top and the font is a bit different. That's the styling being applied from our CSS baseline. Great. With that said, we were supposed to write a lot of code, but I wanted to use this introductory lesson to tell you that you should always read just a bit of documentation before you start. And also you need to be able to search for errors yourself. That's exactly what I'll try to teach you throughout this course. I'll try to go through every single problem with you and teach you how you can research. That way you're going to get better fixing the errors that we encounter together, but also fixing every single error that happens in your entire coding journey. Let's go ahead and in the next lesson, we're going to add so much more code and hopefully we won't have any more errors. So take a bit of a break. This was a good one and I'll see you in the next lecture.